Let's see how it's going to affect this game, though, between our players. Swiss round six, I mean, everything's still out on the table potentially here. So let's dive into this match. Alessandro is going to start us off here, going into the deck with that nest ball. Let's see if some prize checking happens, and uh, we're going to maybe see some realizations of what might be in there. I mean, I generally don't know if you ever check, check for, for how our, many yeah. Arvins you prize. That's like, true. it's definitely not the top of mind card. But if you're looking through and, like, don't even see one, I mean, you know? <laughs> I, I generally, from experience, I would tell you wow. that, like, I've had games where I prized double Gardevoir EX and I didn't immediately notice it. Or really? wow. I prized three rare candies and you don't immediately notice it. Like, of course, every That's person true. has different processes. But we also see a very interesting card uh, hit the field. That is a giraffe rig, <laughs> as we are playing the Farri Giraffe EX in this yes. list. So we'll have to see what or how it actually ends up affecting. Okay, let's break down this list here because we're seeing some interesting things that maybe our viewers are a bit confused about potentially here, Pablo. Especially now we're going into a Raging Bolt EX matchup as well. So what are we going to be seeing as far as the strategy here from Alessandro setting up into this matchup? I mean, you definitely, once you see the Raging Bolt, you know exactly yeah, what, what you are against. up against, right? However, uh, Giraffe Rig will allow you to evolve into Furry Giraffe, which prevents all damage to his Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's basic Pokemon EX. So it's the perfect, absolute perfect counter towards that Raging Bolt. And with the Forest Seal Stone already in play, we could see lone Furry Giraffe honestly take down the whole game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's definitely potential for that. And you got to think that's exactly what Alessandro has in mind here set up for this specific matchup. Now the question is, how is Colin Murley Matthews going to deal with this? Heading into this matchup <laughs> and having to uh, realize what is in play at the moment over on Alessandro's yeah. side. <laughs> I, I would be very surprised if Colin knew what Farigara did at this point. Um, seeing that giraffe rig must have him really, really confused. Yeah, but exactly. Yeah, You're now, waiting for the evolution. Right? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Now, um, Alessandro did attach the Bravery Charm to this Blood Murder Saluna, so that's 300 HP basic Pokemon. Uh, 310, actually. So Raging Bolt will need five energies if, he, if it wants to take a knockout this turn, which that would be ideal. Right? But that's a big ask. Five energies on turn one. You need Sada, you need attachment for turn, and at least double kill mask over upon EX. Yes, exactly. And uh, did you get a look at the hands at all as far as what we're starting out with? Of course, Colin mm -hmm. is going second here. So we can play a supporter, and that Professor Sada's vitality is exactly the supporter you want to see. Accelerate these energy out of your discard pile into the field, and then also draw into three additional cards for your turn as well. A Teal Mask, Ogre Pond, EX coming down, accelerating the grass energy out. All right. <laughs> What a start here for Colin. Jeez. Picture perfect hand. Definitely knows what uh, Farigurav does oh, because yeah. he immediately denied that draft break. So uh, Alessandro does have Fortune in his hand already. So uh, Colin's not going to be happy about that. But what a start by Colin having the A spec in his hand already. Yeah, that was huge here for Colin taking out and taking a prize card off of that giraffe rig there. Alessandro starting over on this turn now. We do have that Forest Seal Stone that was attached to that Rotom V, and it's going to be utilized. So flipping that V-Star marker here to search out this any card from the deck. We're going to see that rare candy into that Pidgeot EX. Yep. With the Thornton in hand, can't just quick search for the Farigurab. That's so hard to say, Boo. Can quick I know, search it's for the Farigurab so EX here. Um, probably switching out the Rotom. However, Colin still has two other two price targets to go um, after. Yeah, that'll bring Colin down to a single price card. But how can he deal with that Furry Graph, which Alessandro does have a psychic energy to attach to yeah. and can actually attack with it? Yeah, which is pretty wild to see here. But, I mean, we're seeing it. So, oh, this is what we're... Uh, 
or we're kind of waiting for here. Of course, this Thor in play, switching these <laughs> out. You don't even have to wait to evolve because it pretty much counts as the last Pokemon it was. Yep. Incredible to see here, as you said, Pablo. And Thorin is just such a cool card. It's probably one of my favorite cards. It's it's not very uh, it's not often seen, but every time we do see it, it's for one of these super yeah. cool plays to pull out that Pokemon right when you need it to make one of these incredible plays. And that's what we're seeing now. So Colin thought it was gone, but not today. Oh, interesting, Alessandro. Not going into the photograph just yet, actually essentially baiting Colin into taking a Ooh. knockout onto this Rotom. With Pidgeot, you're feeling pretty yeah. safe uh, that you'll be able to access anything you need. And I think Alessandro wants to create a situation <laughs> where, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just went for the giraffe ring before. I mean, I think he might just be double checking yeah, the attack, perhaps. Yeah, potentially, yeah. Because Colin does have one answer exactly, the Sandy Shocks. That's the only Pokemon in Colin's deck that can actually damage the Furry Grab. Squagabilly can't, Mew EX can't, Teal Mask and Raging Bolt definitely can't. So it's going to be a tough, uh, tough mountain to climb here for Colin. He yeah. needs for Alessandro to bench something or for Alessandro to somehow not have access to energies to power up the Furry Grab. Yeah, and I'm, I definitely wouldn't be counting on any sort of misplay from Alessandro here but we're gonna see a pokemon Ooh. catcher and it's gonna be a heads which means that pidgeot ex is joining us in the active now unfortunately for alessandro and i mean this card is huge any deck that can play pokemon catcher i mean some people are just adamantly against ever playing pokemon catcher but yep. any deck that has the room for it it gives you some amazing plays that you can make here. Take tons of prize cards, debilitate your opponent. That's what we're seeing here as that Pidgeot EX goes down, not falling for the Rotom V traps here on the stream. Colin Murley Matthews getting through these prize cards pretty quick here. But now Alessandro promoting that for a giraffe EX into the active. Yeah, I generally couldn't tell. Uh how many energies were discarded? Might have been five, so a, a little unnecessary over KO on the Pidgeot. I'm, I'm, I'm probably watching wrong. I could have sworn it was five, but yeah, Alessandro now just promotes the Furry Graph, cannot be targeted down, has a double turbo attached, and now all Alessandro needs to do is wait to get the Psychic Energy. And I think in other situations, some players might feel pressured to establish another Pidgeot, right? Yeah. Bench a PG as well. And that would allow Colin to potentially win this game by taking exactly. prizes around yep. the photograph. But Alessandro being very patient, you know what? Fine, take the Pidgeot. Eventually, I'll find my Psychic, and eventually, I'll start attacking and winning. <laughs> and winning. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. a little caveat there, too. I <laughs> love to see it. <laughs> Teal Mask Ogre Pontiac, one of yeah. my picks for this tournament as far as seeing success. Of course, an ode to this Raging Bolt EX deck, but the Ogre Pawn EX uh, allows you to accelerate that grass energy out of your hand onto the field as well as draw a card. So that's how you're getting <laughs> these energy out and uh, discarding them to be able to take some big knockouts here. Look at that. Yeah, we're just have uh, we're just gonna have a nest ball. Probably gonna go fetch that Sandy Shocks. Try to uh, attack the Furry Graph before it becomes a threat. Now, without Pidgeot, Alessandro doesn't have a great way to potentially heal uh, the Furry Graph or yeah. even find the Psychic. So, if the Psychic takes a while to arrive, uh, that could spell trouble for Alessandro. So, that coin flip heads on the Pokemon Catcher was actually very, very big for Colin. Yeah, and we're looking at only one Psychic, too. So, yeah, yeah who knows when, <laughs> when it's going to yeah, show up. Yeah, when it's going to decide to show up. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The V-Star has been yeah, exhausted. Yeah, four Seal so Stone's gone. It's going to be four extra cards every single turn, right? And there are four Arvents still priced. Oh, yeah. Let's not, <laughs> which yeah, is not crazy to think about. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if there was any sort of, like, energy surge or if there was any sort of Earth and Vessel, that would help. Yeah. But unfortunately, there isn't. Ah, uh, yeah, exactly. Earth and Vessel is a card that I've grown so fond to seeing because it's so good yeah. here but pokey gear 3.0 going to be played from colin murley matthews uh unfortunately is going to be a fail there's no supporter drawn off of that none in reach here for colin so we're going to be just turning through this hand so far for the turn yeah the nest ball was failed on purpose the pokey gear failed uh unfortunately for colin so i wonder what he's planning how does he deal with the Furry Graph if it's not the Sandy Shocks? Why isn't the Sandy Shocks 
in play. I would love to ask him this question right now. <laughs> well, let's check out this pokey stop first here, Pablo. Well, <laughs> I guess we get another chance here on this pokey gear 3.0. Put into the hand off the pokey stop for Colin Asada going into the discard pile, though, off of that yep. pokey stop as well. But another is able to be found here for Colin. That's going to accelerate these energy that were just discarded into the discard pile back onto the field, as well as allowing Colin to draw those three additional cards here for the turn. Yeah, good trade off for Colin. You lose Asada, you gain Asada. So <laughs> yes. not too bad. Now we are going to see two fighting energies being attached, which is what Sandy Shocks need. So I'm, I'm must be missing something here on how Maybe. Colin is going to deal with the Fairy Grab. Can use Iron Bundle to push the Fairy Grab yes, to the bench, true. bring that Rotom and be able to attack this turn. I'm not sure I see it in the hand. Uh, I think it is in the hand, actually. Oh, it is. It's, okay. the, it's the alternate artwork one, but All right. that's going to be not used yeah, here. Yeah, no lightning energy, so yeah, can't oh, attack yeah, with the exactly. Raging Bolt. No, yeah. no, I mean the, the uh, yeah, exactly. You can't attack, can't do yeah. anything, so you're just going to remain with that hand that you have until you can yep. get that energy to be able to attack. Unfortunate, unfortunate there for Colin. You want to keep up that pace. You want to keep that aggression, but sometimes you just don't have the right energy attachments. So Alessandro back over to this turn now. <laughs> Speaking of energy attachments, uh, <laughs> we'd like to see one. <laughs> yeah, but Potentially, but can we get there? Can we get that single psychic energy or not? No psychic found yet. Uh, did use that Pokestop to potentially help get closer with the knowledge of the wrist that you could yeah. end up discarding the psychic. You do have Suprod to potentially put it back into the deck, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, there is a copy of Suprod. Yep. But We'll have to see what Colin has in store for us. He's going to go Iron Bundle, bring up the Rotom, yeah. get down to a single prize card, but then really, really, really needs to get that Sandy Shock <laughs> into play as soon as he can. Exactly. Well, well, that Professor Sada's Vitality played from the hand here. That's going to get those additional energies needed to power up that Raging Bolt EX. And now, finally join in the party here, Pablo. You yeah. summoned that Sandy Shocks <laughs> out of the deck here for Colin. I, I generally have to wonder why it wasn't here before, Boo, and could have <laughs> been discarded by the Pokestop, but now it's finally here, it's on the bench, and it can, I believe, how much HP does Farigurav have? I think 260, so with three attacks, you can KO the Farigurav. Yeah, yes. so it's the race to the Psychic Energy, Ooh. the amazing, amazing uh, issue of finding the Psychic <laughs> Energy here. Can Alessandro find it? I'm not so sure. Yeah, it is going to be tough here, but maybe we'll hit it. I mean, the deck is... <sighs> it still looks like there's a lot of cards in there, unfortunately, but we'll see if we can get lucky here on Alessandro's yeah. side of things because there is the potential for it, but Colin still has this turn to play out here. That Earthen Vessel going to discard a Radiant Greninja here for those two energy. It's going to be that electric as well as a fighting type energy, which is needed here for Colin. Now, I guess that's Colin. You could start attacking the Farigraph this turn instead of trying to uh, take down the Rotom, but oh, this yeah. will give Alessandro three extra cards for at least the next two turns to get closer to that Psychic. Now, yeah, Colin does play at least one copy of Suprat. Uh, no. Top no. deck the Penny. Yeah, Penny not good here. Yep. And uh, Colin can get back uh, Sandy Shocks at least once Look with Suprat. As well, we do see the Pokestop here. Yeah, Pokestop, it's just going to be three discards here for Alessandro, though. Still um, discarding these energy, but at least not the Psychic. Yeah. The hero Sandy Shocks, boo, this Sandy Shocks, wow. not the star of the show, right? It's usually Raging Bolt taking those huge knockouts or Ogre Pond as well, advancing yeah. your win conditions and your game state, but this area will help. <laughs> it will get rid of two very useful item cards, but that Psychic Energy has not been found. Yeah, you hate to see it here, but as you said, Pablo, this Sandy Shock's carrying so much weight now with that magnetic burst turn after turn here. We're even going to see this counter catcher now from Alessandro to bring that Raging Bolt EX up into the active position. Yeah, going to try to slow down the Sandy Shock's damage. That Raging Bolt does have a huge 
three retreat costs, not easy to cover, though exactly, Colin does yeah. have enough energies in hand, so Sandra probably gonna try that again next turn. Gonna get three extra cards. Can we find the Psychic Boo? This is huge. Yes, oh, there it there. is. Just yes. in time. So <laughs> can Colin identify this? Is there any body language change on Alessandro that can tell you this? And can exactly. you do anything about it even? There is a copy of Iono, oh but is it even accessible at this point in time? I think it's still in the deck. I can't really tell all these it's, alternate it's, art cards. Uh, I know, yeah. They're Might already be in the hand. I really can't tell, but there is a copy of Iono somewhere, somewhere here. I mean, it wasn't or it wasn't already uh, discarded, right? Oh, it's in the prize cards. It's in the prize cards. There we go. Thank you so much Thank to production you. for helping us out and reminding us that Somewhere the Iono is not is accessible. Yeah, so you cannot gone. deny the psychic. However, exactly. as long as Colin can attack here and can get two attacks, right? Eventually, he will find that super rod, recycle the Sandy Shocks, and attack once more. That could be the deciding factor. <laughs> I think Alessandro said, not that you need it, but uh, just some, <laughs> some more draws here off of that pokey stuff. We're seeing that energy hit the boards now for that Raging Bolt. EX for Colin. Looks Ooh. like debating the bundle now. I think now is the wrong time for a bundle. It was either last turn yeah. to deny access to, went to extra three cards, or now just focus down on the Farigraph. This would be a very unfortunate decision for Colin. He knows that the Psychic was not available last turn, but he doesn't yeah. know that it is now available. And as long as he gets the damage onto that Furry Grab, this then he scary. can super out back the Sandy Shocks. Wow. But no, we see the Iron Bundle. I mean, Colin doesn't know this. We know it because yeah. we're very uh, <laughs> lucky to have this over Cam. But not having that damage on the Furry Grab is going to be potentially huge if Alessandro yes. can knock out the Sandy Shocks this turn. As Colin whiffs the Iono, the last prize card, Boo. I know. I, that's exactly what I was about to say, Pablo. Of course, last prize card remaining here for Colin is that Iono as well. But... Hey, what you going to do at this point? I still don't even, I mean, there's no way you could really tell, I guess. Uh, Alessandro was remaining just steadfast there in that turn. We're seeing the Pokestop here, Penny and a Fire Energy hitting the discard pile from Alessandro. Now, Armor Tail is preventing this Raging Bolt from doing anything, but yes. Alessandro actually has the perfect card to deal with that Sandy Shocks. He has a copy of Lost CD. If he knocks out oh, that Sandy Shocks oh and gosh. sends it to the Lost Zone, the game <laughs> immediately ends as Alexander yep, realizes <laughs> that he has four. Right he, he, I'm pretty sure he didn't You're know. Right, no one no, checks did not for know. four. He Armin, did Armin, not know. Did I Very yeah, few people I mean, will realize this. It's valid, yeah. I mean, you really do not <laughs> check for that. You just expect to uh, hit one eventually. But yeah. Alessandro <laughs> getting a nice laugh <laughs> out of the Hisuian Heavy Ball, revealing those prize cards and all of those Arvin in them. <laughs> Definitely a fun time. Oh, oh my gosh, they're and they're going to just all hide in the prizes exactly. at the very it's top. It's like a group hiking trip or something right <laughs> <Yeah>. now. <laughs> well, Alessandro here, that uh, Farigraf, Farigraf still in the active position here with just that double turbo so far and that Bravery Charm on it. But exactly as you said here, that Lost City would be awful There's to see. Psychic. psychic finally coming down here. Not what Colin wants to be seeing here from the hand, but I mean, look at how many cards are in the hand from Alessandro. I mean, <laughs> you had to expect something was gonna happen eventually here. Now, this is uh, this is actually sort of funny. Like, Alessandro could have used this uh, Luminion to find one of the Arvins to get Countercatcher to Lost Zone. <laughs> the Sandy Shocks, it does leave him vulnerable with that target on the bench, right? So I'm pretty sure we're gonna see the Penny immediately for mm -hmm. Alessandro. Does yeah. go for that boss's orders, can't directly search for <laughs> Uh, for the counter catcher with an Arvin next turn. But yeah, we're gonna see a Penny, not gonna take any risks whatsoever. And it's very unfortunate that Colin's last, last prize is Iona. If Iona was available and he could take away this humongous hand, he would probably be able to take away the Lost City that I doubt Alessandro is gonna play here. But if Alessandro plays it, then maybe Colin can potentially counter it. But yeah, that Iono being the last prize might be the decisive factor here, Boo. I, I actually think it might, and that is tragic to see here, Pablo, it come down to that. But Alessandro reading the energy card here. Yeah, I think Farigurab does damage to the bench, 30 damage, and that is oh, definitely so reduced. You, so it's going to be only it 10 20. damage. Yes, yeah. exactly. It's only going to be 10 damage to the bench. Every effect that reduces uh, damage does reduce the it. Effects. Um, 
to the bench, but every effect that increases damage is only to the active. That's a very important rule of the Pokemon trading card game. Yeah, fun <laughs> facts here, Pablo. You love to see it. So Pablo we are... Fun Facts Meza <laughs> is indeed my middle name. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> yeah, we finally get to see this attack here from the Ferrigraph EX, the Dirty Beam. For, of course, that 160, but with that double turbo, uh, uh, nerfed just a little bit in the damage here. But even more importantly, that Armor Tail is what we've been talking about this whole time. The ability on that Ferrigraph EX that's preventing all of the damage done to it by basic Pokemon EX. Now, we were worried about Mim Mimikyu and such, and now we're talking about uh, Ferrigraph, huh? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Ironic. Yeah, I mean, the answer to Mimikyu is the Sandy Shocks. What's yes. the answer to Sandy Shocks? Lost zoning and attacking with Farigraph. So yeah. there's no doubt in my mind, as soon as Colin sees that Lost City, he's going to scoop up his cards. Oh. There it is. Well, I guess he's not going to, but there's going to be no way for him to yeah. deal that last attack. So that turn that yeah. Colin... Uh, like, he delayed the KO on the Rotom one turn. The Sandy Shock should be hitting the Lost yes. Zone over here. Maybe just right, not realizing the what... the Lost City. What, there, okay, we there we go. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, that way you can't super it back. You have no way to damage this lone Pokemon for yeah. your grab. is obviously not going to bench anything else. I don't think yes. there's anything that Colin can do at this point. And... The, I mean, the Iono could have been played last turn. Maybe Alessandro would have been able to find the Lost City. We don't know. Yes. But... The big turn, the big turning point of this game was the turn where Colin chose not to kill the Rotom, gave Alex Alessandro three extra cards, and then he then attacked the Farigraph when it was one turn too late. I yeah, to ghosting effects to potentially bypass, right, that Farigraph EX if it does hit the board. But yeah. do you want to uh, mention the, the Thornton for Alessandro, right? The Thornton yeah, was big. the reason why Alessandro was able to create that perfect situation for himself but unfortunately now that is price and the one thing control decks really like right now is access to the price cards they can unlock pokemon basic pokemon but yeah. pretty much nothing else unless they play like a weird combo so uh that's gonna be a potential issue here now it seems like alessandro is gonna be having a, a an underwhelming setup and this is where iron bundle would be fantastic to just I know. bring up uh. the Break, but that's not going to be available for Carlin right here. Yeah, that's unfortunate to see a lack of gust here. Thanks to those prize cards, but we'll see how Colin plays around this. I mean, maybe the sheer um, fast pace of this deck in the Raging Bolt EX will be able to power through here before oh, Alessandro okay. can really get off the ground. But that Nest Ball going to bring out our Rotom V. Yeah. Yeah, there was another Pokemon available for Alessandro. We're going to see that instant charge. Alessandro already yeah. has the Ferrigraph in his hand. So Woo! it's going to create, once again, problems for Colin. And it's going to be a race, once again, to the exactly. Lost City and the energy for Alessandro to run yeah. away with this game. Colin has one answer and one answer only, and that is Sandy Shocks. Yeah, we saw the strategy play out last game for Alessandro, and it's exactly what we saw last game being set up now on the field for Alessandro. Colin has the same exact set, uh, strategy there. Maybe we'll see it sooner this time around, but we still do have a little bit of this initial setup to get through here on Colin's side. And now we're going to see an Ultra Bowl probably for a good friend, Squawka Billy, making sure that we get a fresh new hand. We have yeah. more resources and... I mean, you still need to play the game, right? You still need to apply pressure. You still need to deal damage. The best card that Colin doesn't know that he wants right now is probably Iono in order to take away that for yeah. graph from Alessandro's hand. But now that there are four Arvin available, you can easily just Arvin for a Forest Hill Stone and even just an Ultra Ball and establish that. So Yeah, there's unless, options. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely options. So unless Colin's able to find a knockout potentially on the Giraffe Rake this turn, uh, Giraffe again for your graph is so confusing. I, I hate uh, it, I hate it. <laughs> you know what? It happens to me the same with Mincino and Cinchino. I always really? say the wrong one every oh single my time. Gosh. Yeah, but you think of like like mini, the I uh, that small brain one. association has <laughs> not happened <laughs> <laughs> for me yet. <laughs> well, you know, my brain association here with this uh squawk ability. Um I always say, we're squawking, we're seasoned here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what's about to happen. I love decks that play uh, this squawk ability. I mean, it's just cool to have a deck that's super explosive, can turn 
through uh, these earlier turns, get a ton of stuff out on the field. But it does come at a cost sometimes of losing some awkward resources as well. Colin Merley Matthews, as far as the hand goes, I think it's two pokey gear at the moment, as well as a grass energy. Uh, this teal mask ogre pond has already accelerated one onto the field for the turn. Of course, only able to use one per teal mask ogre pond per turn. But those those resources are hitting the discard pile now. Off of that squawk and seize into a fresh new cards for Colin. Very interesting decision there by Colin. Not even trying to find a supporter of the uh, Poke Poke Gears. Gears will now play the follow-up one after having one already in hand. So very peculiar uh, sequencing there. I have to wonder what the plan. I mean, maybe he's just trying to find that Iono early to deny whatever Alessandro has. Like he might have a tell that because Alessandro nestled for the giraffe rake first, and yeah, that's the first that's thing true. he got instead of a Pidgey. That's a tell that the Farigraf is in Alessandro's hand. Is, that's a big it, yeah. tell. Yeah, I mean that definitely is, and that might be uh, why Colin was playing that sequence of events out there, but that, that Raging Bolt EX gonna get that fighting energy, of course, not uh, attached from turn, but it was off that Professor Sada's vitality. Yeah. And so additional three cards drawn to the hand there for Colin. We're gonna see another Teal Mask Ogre Pond hit the bench as well for Colin. Unfortunately, no more grass energy in the hand to be able, well, Said that too soon, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, a little too soon there, boo. <laughs> <laughs> we have the Earthen Vessel. Fantastic card that plays into the stack. You can discard a card to it, get those energy that you need uh, to re-accelerate from the Professor Sada's Vitality into the discard pile to get out those grass energy that you're accelerating in a different way thanks to those nice teal mask ogre ponds that have come to the party with their masks, and they're looking pretty nice. Very nice indeed. Very fancy with her mask, I would say. Uh, which one would you choose to be if you were an ogre pond or uh, an ogre pond mask? I guess. I guess I like I like the water, the water. Uh, the wellspring. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the water one. <laughs> yeah, it looks kind of sad though. Are you sad, Pablo? Uh, no, I'm pretty happy. Honestly, <laughs> I'm pretty happy at this moment. Isn't the move called sob? It is. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not trying to be the card. I'm just trying to be the mask. Yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we got some cool masks out there, but these teal mask ogre pawns are definitely doing some work here for Colin. This is the pokey stop here, netting us an ultra ball as well as a pal pad here for Colin's turn. We're gonna see the acceleration from the hands attachment for turn here onto that raging bolt ex allowing it to use this bellowing thunder coming up. Uh, it's just going to be on a little sand true. Yeah, though. poor sand true. <laughs> <laughs> not going to be happy just at being in the active. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Having a good time sitting in the sun, basking, and then boom, <laughs> bellowing thunder. The storms are coming in here from that raging bolt EX. Uh, do see Colin eyeing up that Sandy Shocks here. And uh, I think Colin needs to be aware that the time is running down. I know, so I would yeah. love to see his decisions be like a little more uh, decisive in the sense that this is what I need to do. Uh, I would love to keep the bench space open for a potential iron bundle. I would love to see the Sandy Shocks already being played. So like yes. Alexander can immediately knock it out even if they have the lost seed, right? This is yeah. actually when it's the least likely that it's going to be KO'd. And you would like to start pressuring that paragraph as soon as you can. So. Interesting choices here. We'll have to see um, after the Sandstro goes down, what's Colin's plan to deal with the furry graph? Well, well, he only has one plan, really. Yeah, yeah, there is only one plan. It's just how he goes about uh, yeah. exploring that plan. And maybe that's where we see the hesitancy, potentially, from Colin. Because, I mean, we got down to one prize guard yeah. in the last game. So, potentially, there's just more hesitancy there from Colin to not want to make a wrong move and play out all of these actions perfectly to set up and be able to check checkmate your opponent versus the other way around, as we saw in our game one. So definitely making some uh, slower decisions here uh, based on this clock that's just under 19 minutes. But hopefully we'll be able to, uh, to see a conclusion either way between these players. But we're over on to Alessandro's turn after that sand shoe, unfortunately, hits the discard pile, goes back into the ball here for our players, and Alessandro promotes that Rotom V, jumps back into the deck with that Ultra Ball, discarding that Pidgeot EX, as well as a Bravery Charm. Right now, another option that opened up for Alessandro right now that the Squawk is in play is 
Alessandro can actually use the Wellspring over Pontiac hey. with that sob attack, right? <laughs> we with a double it. turbo to potentially trap that squag of Billy in yeah. the active with no threat of getting damaged. Now, there are uh, switch cards and prime catcher available for Colin, so maybe not the best strategy unless you have um, a single price Pokemon. I don't know. Like, it's another potential option if the resources fall through, but we're seeing Luminion for an Arvin, for a first heal stone. So yeah. Whatever Alessandro needs, he's going to get. Yes, whatever else is going to be sought out of the deck here for Alessandro. So Luminion, that luminous sign, grabbing that Arvin, the Arvin being played immediately, getting a tool card and an item card. The item card is going to be that lost vacuum here for Alessandro. Four Seal Stone is going to be our tool card. We have not used the V-Star power yet over on us, Alessandro's side, but we're going to see that Seal Stone come down onto this Luminion B. Uh, immediately be used here to get that energy attachment now down on that Farigarath. Yeah, that race to the psychic energy is going to be much easier this time around already Yay. in play. Thanks to Arvin, completely eh? saved. Yeah, <laughs> thanks to who would have thought it. Arvin finally <laughs> deciding to make an appearance in this round six You match. think Alessandro counted this time or not? No. Honestly, <laughs> I that still happens don't once you and check. Yeah, you never check. That's you a one check. in 10,000 game. You just, like, chalk it up to the universe uh, being uh, playing a prank on you and then yeah, exactly. you move on to the next one. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. I got to say, too, Alessandro's sleeves are so cute. Look <laughs> at that. Pikachu holding a little gift. We're going to see. Uh, this is the Poke Stop here Oof. for Alessandro. Damn, Alessandro just found that double turbo. So Varigraf is going to be ready to attack. And oh, wait. That was not the Poke Stop. That was an uh, instant charge. Yeah, that was an instant <laughs> charge indeed. My bad and uh, is holding the Lost City as well. So as soon as Colin sets down that Sandy Shocks, Colin's going to be in a lot, I mean, yeah, in a lot of trouble. Now, yeah. this is where Colin might try to play it. No, it's not. It doesn't work. It, like, even if Colin tries to what play it cool, let's Alessandro take like four prizes, even yeah. five if he gives up on the Greninja, and then tries to go in with uh, the Sandy Shocks plus uh, an Iono down to one for Alessandro. Uh, then the Sandy Shocks goes down, it gets recovered with Super Rod, attacks again, and then that's it because there's only one copy of Super Rod in yeah, Colin's deck, tough. so you cannot attack three times. So Ooh. I don't see a solution happen, to yeah. this problem. I really don't. Exactly. I mean, is, is that going to be the differentiating factor here for Alessandro? Just having those those cards both in that Farigarath as well as that Lost City. It's brutal here for Colin. Uh, if only we had that other Ogre Pond here. <laughs> if only, yeah. yeah if Which only one? Which Ogre Pond are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I'm feeling the I'm going to mess up. Stone. I almost stone. said Center Stone. <laughs> 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 the Cornerstone Ogre Pond as well. Yeah, the which nice honestly is not uh, an uncommon inclusion in yeah, this sort I know, of deck. Right? It surprised. would allow you to bypass. Yeah. Mimikyu would allow you to bypass this for Egraph, so not a bad call. Yeah. Not a bad call, but I mean... <laughs> There's only so many uh, control style decks out in the field, too. So maybe you just, you know, you tech for what you can, but then for the ones that you hit, sometimes you just got to take a loss. Both of these players are sitting at undefeated records here, 5 and 0. Oh, so you got to think that their matchups have been pretty good so far. Maybe there's been some close games, but they've been able to win out here so far at AIC. So maybe Colin might just be chalking this, this one up, too. I'll do everything I can, but hey, sometimes it's just not in the cards. That is going to be a fail as well of that uh, that gust, yeah. that Pokemon catcher. Now, Poke stop. Yeah, Poke stop, hitting a superior energy retrieval, not a bad card. And yeah, I mean you have to, as you were mentioning, who like, yeah. what are the chances of running into this deck? Right, there's only we, 57 of them. Right, right and that was Morlax, <laughs> not even this one. Oh, right, yeah, so that's this true. one is going to be even lower. Oh, my so gosh. do you take your chances against a? 3% deck in that 2600 person tournament? Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with that because you still have to build a deck that's consistent enough to take you through a variety of matchups here. So that is why we uh, could leave out that inclusion of an additional Ogre Pond because it can be kind of awkward to have or start with potentially or, you know, into those matchups where it doesn't really matter as much. It's kind of a liability for you at some point because really your your entire strategy here is to take these large knockouts with that Raging Bolt. It's a fast-paced deck. It accelerates all these energies down. You can even have some, some play here with that Teal Mask Ogre Pond as far as attacking as well, but those are still basic EXs. 
And that is where the true downfall, unfortunately, for Colin in this matchup is. And somehow we've now casted a bunch of control today as well, Pablo. <laughs> it is back-to-back -back control. Uh, style decks now Colin does get two more prizes. Will probably eventually be able to knock out this Luminion. But now that the Fergograph is powered up, yeah. and there's the threat, even if there wasn't Lost City. Colin can attack twice yeah, with exactly. Sandy Shocks. So then how do you get that last bit enough. of damage? Not There's enough. just no way to do so. Yeah, I think Colin is realizing that. Of course, you're just going to play it out. I mean, we still got time on the clock. Alessandro's going to be playing this Arvin here for the turn. <laughs> oh, brutal. Well, now even brutal. four Sandy Shocks is just not going to be enough. <laughs> exactly. Even if you had the potential for it, the hero's cape. We're talking about the disrespect of the unfair stamp, but Hero's Cape coming out of the woodwork, out of the deck here for Alessandro. That's plus 100 HP uh, on top of everything else we're seeing as far as the uphill obstacles that Colin has to face already. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's exactly four attacks from Sandy Shock, but only two are possible now that there's exactly. enough damage. There's no energy denial. There's no Temple of Sin of sorts to maybe deny the double turbo from working for a turn. Right, and even like even if that was Colin's plan, trying to uh, deny something or whatnot, um, and put Alessandro down to one price or one or two cards with Iono, yeah. I just cannot see a way. Imagine a way where Colin can pull this off. I generally can't. Well, I'm waiting for a surprise here, Pablo. <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm just sitting around ready for some excitement. But hey, nothing's more exciting here than this for Rigoraf doing work. Yeah. in this matchup. It's not just a Ferrigaraf. It is that Terra type Ferrigaraf. It's got cool hats, okay? <laughs> and we're facing off against this Raging Bolt EX that is just defenseless here against it. I think they're discussing what's going on here right now, but Colin is going to end up benching down the Sandy Shocks here. We're going to see the switch cart. Yep. Switch cart we're going to see. I think see. trying to be like, hey, yeah. this is what happens. Uh, in this matchup, <laughs> it's the case. You don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and there's the Lost yes. City hitting the board once again. Colin out of options. And even the Penny. Oh, so wow. not even going to be able Brutal. to take two prize cards for here. Uh, for Colin, single fire grab. No way to deal with it. No canceling Cologne. No mm -hmm. Cornerstone. Ogre Pontiac. No answer oh, whatsoever. Looks... I know, Colin looks so defeated here to lose this record of a 5-0 start here at NAIC, but that Sandy Shocks has hit the loss zone here. And uh, <laughs> Colin is, I think, just realizing, wow, what do we do here? <laughs> I'm gonna gonna read double it again. check that he's not Let's missing anything. There's no exception to this rule. Maybe if you hey. hit it hard enough with weakness from <laughs> Teal Mask Ogre Pond, you can accomplish anything, but uh, I don't think there is a way the Lost CD plus Fairy Graph combination just too powerful for Colin Merley Matthews to deal with. Alessandro even forgot to take a pr to take his prize oh, card really? earlier. Oh, really? He wow. already got it, but he even forgot because he doesn't need to take prize cards. He just yeah, needs exactly. to leave this Fairy Graph, and he's going to win. Oh, Colin trying yeah. his best to find a solution, but I don't I mean, you think hear there it. is one. You hear it. He says there's no way out at this point. Nest Ball yep. going to go into the deck. We're going to see. It. Take a look at all the cards that are left in the deck for Colin, but unfortunately, none are going to work here. And that means Alessandro is going to take a 2-0 win here in our Swiss round six with this control deck and the help of Farigaraf. Farigaraf EX was a card that I was definitely not <laughs> banking on seeing today. We didn't put that on our caster picks, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Now, fantastic display for Alessandro. I mean, 